Zone.js is included in every Angular application and it could actually be making it do 10, 100 or even a thousand times more rendering work than it actually needs to do. So why do we need it? By the end of this video, you'll understand why it's there in the first place, what we can do to work around it, why the Angular team is working toward making it optional, and you're also going to have a pretty good idea of how change detection works in Angular. So you can imagine your application as a tree of components. At the top, we have the root component, which is usually called app component. And above that, we have this thing called application ref, which is a reference to our Angular application that is running on the page. So the component tree we are looking at now represents a simple application that might look like what we see on the right here. So this entire application is contained within this root component. Inside of our root component, we have our home component, our page component, and that also has two additional components in it, component one and component two, and component two even has its own child component called button component. So our application ref has a method called tick, and it is this method that is responsible for rendering changes, like when you add a to-do or increase a counter or something like that. So you can see here, if I click on this component two button, I've got this counter set up so that every time I click on it, it is going to increment this number. And when I do that, something needs to happen to re-render that change on the screen. So when tick is called, it is going to run the detect changes method for every view or node in this tree. But the problem is how or when do we call tick? So if you've been using Angular, then you probably know that we're not doing this ourselves when we make changes. The changes in our application just seem to automatically be reflected in our templates. So Angular is doing this for us somehow. So this is where Zone.js comes into the picture. Zone.js is what calls tick for us. So in short, what Zone.js does is patch browser APIs like set timeout and set interval, uh, HTTP requests, promises, event listeners, and other things. So it patches these APIs in such a way that it allows Angular and ng-zone to trigger the tick method that is going to run change detection for our application whenever any of these events occur. So in other words, Angular is listening for anything that could possibly result in a change to our application state, and it will trigger change detection as a result. So if we have a set timeout function run, it's possible that that might have changed some kind of application state and Angular needs to make sure that change is rendered to the template. So it is zone.js that allows Angular to listen for these types of events. And anytime any of those things happen, we are going to run change detection for the entire component tree. So let's take a look at this example application that I have set up. So this is all using the default change detection strategy at the moment. So in each of the components in the application, I have set up this function call in the template. So this way, whenever change detection runs for this component, we will see a message logged out because it's going to render the template. It's going to trigger this function and it's going to run this console log statement. And I have also set up these buttons in each component. And since they have event bindings, which is one of the things Zone.js listens for that could potentially cause a change, Clicking on them is going to cause change detection to be triggered. So now we can trigger change detection in any of these components and we can see what happens as a result. So if I click on the button in the root component, we can see that change detection runs for the entire component tree. You can see here we render app component, then home component, component one, component two, and the cool button component. Now let's clear this out. And instead this time, let's click on the button for component two. So when we do that, we can also see that the entire component tree has been rendered again. Let's clear that again. And this time we'll try clicking on just this component that is inside of component two. And again, we get the entire component tree rendering. So no matter where change detection is triggered, we are running change detection for all of our components. So we can improve this situation a bit by using the on push change detection strategy. So I'm going to quickly recap how on push works here, but if you are unfamiliar with it, I would recommend checking out one of the videos I'll link in the description for more context. So with on push, a very similar process is going to happen, but with a bit of a difference. So let's assume that all of these components are using on push change detection now, and that a tick has been triggered because we clicked the button on component two. And specifically, I mean component two's button, not the button within component two. 
So as Angular is checking each node in this component tree, starting with this root component, if it gets to a component that uses on push change detection, it is going to stop and ask itself a question. It's going to ask, has anything happened here to trigger one of the special on push change detection rules? Specifically, has the input for this component changed? More specifically, has the input reference changed? Or has an event that Angular handles like a click binding been triggered in this component or any of its children? So if the answer is no, it is going to stop checking that entire branch of the tree or the subtree. So in this case, if that failed here at the root component, we wouldn't check any of the rest of the application. The change detection work would just stop. However, if one of those on push scenarios has been satisfied, it is going to trigger change detection for the component and it's going to continue checking that subtree. So again, we're assuming that all of these components use on push and that we have an event triggered in component two. So when we're checking the root component, it's going to see that there has been an event from some child. So we are going to continue, run detect changes, go to the home component, the same thing's going to happen again here. A child of this component has had an event triggered. So we are going to run detect changes on the home component and continue checking the subtree. Then when we get to component one, we're going to see that that change detection condition failed. In this case, there is no event from component one and there's no children of component one that have emitted some event. So change detection will not be triggered for component one. And if there were more child components of component one, we would just stop checking this entire subtree. So basically change detection work is finished on this branch now. However, component two will have change detection triggered as it was the source of the event in the first place. But now when we get to checking its child components, those on push conditions are not satisfied and the change detection work will not continue. So we will not run change detection for button component or anything else that was below it. So if we take a look at our demo again, I've changed it so that all of these components use on push change detection, and we can use this to verify what we just talked about. So if I click on the root component now, we can see that change detection only needs to run on the root component. And we can tell that because there is just this one console log message now. Now, if I click on that button inside of component two, which was the scenario we were talking about, we can see that change detection runs on all of its parents up to the root component. So we have change detection running on app component, on home component and on component two. But importantly, it doesn't trigger change detection for the child button component. And it also doesn't trigger change detection for its sibling component, component one, as we just discussed. And we could do the same thing for component one. If I click on component one, we can see that change detection is triggered for everything up to the root component, all of its parents. So it's triggered for app component, home component and component one. But again, it is not triggered for component two. Now, if you have seen some of my recent videos on on push and change detection, you might have heard me go on about the three scenarios where change detection is triggered with on push. So the third scenario I usually mention is the async pipe is being used in the template and a new value has been emitted. So behind the scenes, this actually utilizes a manual method for triggering change detection. So when a new item is emitted, the async pipe will call the mark for check method. So what this will do is manually indicate that change detection should run for the current component and all of its ancestors or parents. And this is the type of behavior we've just seen where if we triggered uh, component two, it is going to run change detection for the root component, for the home page component and for component two as well. So now the next time tick is triggered and Angular is checking these components, it will see that the first two conditions for on push change detection were not satisfied because an observable emitting with the async pipe isn't one of our on push conditions but they have been manually marked as requiring change detection. And so it will run detect changes on those components anyway. So we can see this behavior in another example I have set up. So in this one, I just have a dummy service that emits values on an observable every two seconds. And we are subscribing to that inside of the component to component with the async pipe. 
So if we switch to the application, what we will see is that every second change detection is running for component two and all of its parents, but not for its children or siblings. Just like with the click handler example we looked at. You can see over on the right here that we just have these three components being rendered every two seconds. So we have this solution to not re-render the entire component tree with on push, but it is still a little bit awkward. If we have a change in our component way down in our component tree, rather than Angular just updating this one component, it needs to check every single one of its parents. So this is where solutions like RX Angular come into the picture. So we are going to cover RX Angular in more depth in another video, but let's take a quick look at one final example here. So if instead of using the async pipe, we use RX Angular's push pipe or its RX let directive, we can achieve something like this. So we can have some change being emitted from that pipe in our component too, but instead of calling mark for check and marking this component and all of the parents as requiring change detection, RX Angular will instead use detect changes directly to trigger change detection manually for just this one component. So if we open up another new demo here, you can see that I am now using the RX Angular push pipe instead of the async pipe. And I'm also using the RX let directive here as well to render out this value. So this is basically just two different ways to achieve the same thing here. So if we open up this application now and have a look at what is happening with change detection, we can see that we have our dummy observable emitting every one second, and we can see the values being updated in the application here. But we can see that change detection is only running for component two, as that is the only console log message we get. So we can see the change being rendered out to our template, but change detection is not required for any of the parents of this component. Okay, just one final interesting note before we wrap this video up. Uh, just recently, there was a pull request from Minko to the Angular docs to update the Angular roadmap. And part of that was making Zone.js optional. So the hard thing about Zone.js and change detection for Angular is that a lot of Angular developers have come to depend on it. So if you want the default change detection strategy experience where things just seem to update automatically without needing to think about it or structure things in any particular way, then zones are currently the price we have to pay for that. So we can already work around that somewhat today by introducing new rules into our applications with things like on push or with RX Angular. And that is something we are going to explore in a bit more depth soon. And it's also going to be interesting to see what the Angular team comes up with for an optional zone.js future. All right, that's it from me today. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, please feel free to hit like and subscribe before you go. And I hope you stick around for the next video.